Hey, what's up? How is Walmart's Motel 141 model after about a month of use? How does it check out after me actually using it for about a month? Let's get into it. All right, so if you watch some of my other videos, and uh, I've actually done a more extensive, like 20 minute video on the review of this, and that was when I first got it. So what I wanna do today is I wanna kinda go through this. Laptop's over here. It's basically the Motel, it's by Walmart, and it's the, the lower end version. It's the Ryzen 3 chip. Basically, it's the model M141-SL for silver. So I have the silver model I'll show you here in a second. So how did this perform after, you know, about a month of use? Like, what are my, what's the real world kind of verdict on it after me using it quite extensively for a month? Um, long story short, that this is just going to be a quick one and, and an update on how it's actually doing after about a month of use. But long story short, this has got a Ryzen 3. It's a full 1080p screen on it. And uh, it's got only 4 gigs of RAM, which is going to be, you know, possibly an issue. It's got a Bluetooth 4.2 4 on here, a wire uh, Wi-Fi A, B, G, N, and AC. It's got Windows 10 on it. It's got built-in Vega 3 graphics as well. And uh, you know, like I said before, it's got the battery's 4,100 milliamps. Um, and uh, it's got one HDMI, one USB 2.0, two USB 3.1, USB-C times one, and Ethernet times one. It's got a micro SD slot and it's got 128 gigs SSD. So the beauty of this unit though, is it comes in at 199. I got it for that actually at Walmart. Again, it may, I think it ranges from like 199 to like 279, somewhere in there. All the link where you can buy it as well, you know, depending on the price right now. Anyways, that's what the laptop's all about. And let me go ahead and grab it here without making my chair make a ton of noise. Um, but basically here's the unit right here. You can see it. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the camera up and show you some of the, uh, you know, some of the caveats behind it and show you what it's, you know, what, what, what how did it perform basically after a month? Um, you know, this is a, a laptop that is very, I guess, Mac, Mac Air like, I guess, MacBook Air. You can see it's, it's very, very light. I mean, it's very, very thin. It's a really thin metal construction. And I, some people have told me it is metal. Um, it is kind of, you know, cool to the touch, but it's very, very thin if it is. But basically the unit itself, I mean, realistically, it's super light. Like I said, you can fit this in your backpack. It weighs almost nothing. But I do feel like after using this for a month that if I was to drop this, even from like maybe this distance, it might break. I mean, I, the corners are some pieces this don't feel metal, but you know, everyone's telling me it is. I mean, there's definitely parts on the back, like the, the grill and stuff that maybe is plastic. So what you're getting for 199, you know, you're getting Ryzen 3 SSD, uh, Vega 3 graphics, but you're not getting the solid construction like you would get like a MacBook Air or something like that. I mean, MacBook Air, it feels like if you drop it, it's gonna dent. This one, you know, it just feels like something might happen to it. So, I mean, that might be the case with any laptop nowadays, but I just wanna let people know, as far as the build quality, I would say it's, you know, it's definitely a, a looker when you look at the unit, you know, when you're traveling, people are going to ask, what is this thing? You just, you know, the hinges up here and stuff, I think those are plastic. So you just want to be careful with it, number one. That's my honest opinion after a month. So here's the laptop here. You can see the screen. First impressions of the screen was great. And then after about a month of use, it's still great. I mean, obviously it may not get as bright as, um, you know, some of the MacBooks and things like that. But as far as the sharpness and the matte screen on here, very, very uh, impressive screen. So uh, when you open up things, you know, obviously like whites and things like that may not be as white as you get on a MacBook and things, but overall the text is very easy to read. Um, let's go ahead and uh, try to get rid of some of this stuff that may pop up during the review. So, but you can see how this works. So basically long story short, the screen I would say is after using it for $199, you can't complain. So I'm gonna give that about a nine out of 10 on the screen. It's a small screen, small bezels. You can see there's a camera up here. It does have um, face recognition when you open up the, the laptop. So that's uh, going to be, you know, not to log in that way. You just do your face. That's actually a positive. It's got a thin bezel around it and the camera at the top, like I said. So it's got some good viewing angles for the, uh, the video camera up on top, which is 720p. But long story short, I'll give that, you know, a 9 out of 10. All right, so performance. So this is the issue. So performance over the last month has been, I would say, good. I would maybe give it a six or a seven out of 10. And the main reason is a couple different things. Number one, um, you know, the performance is a little bit slower. I don't know why, but when I was actually pulling up certain websites, um, you know, using like, look at like this, for example, when I was using Edge, let that load in. Um, for some reason on Edge, it, things take a little bit longer. Now, granted, it's my internet connection, which I'll get into in a second. Um, it's not bad by any stretch. I mean, in fact, you know, it happened to be that it was a while since I've opened this up, but, um, you know, things on, on Edge, you know, I was checking my Google stats and things like that. They just seem to be a little bit slower for some reason. So I installed um, Chrome. Let's go ahead and shut this down. Let's go ahead and open up Chrome again. 
and we'll show you what Chrome is here. So Chrome's up here, and let's go to, to I know this is just basic, um, you know, loading of, of uh, websites and things like that, but I just noticed that Chrome is a, just a lot quicker in the browser. Um, now, granted, some things are still loading in and things like that still here as well, but I just noticed um, checking my Google stats and things where it's actually doing some kind of work, um, it is basically a little bit faster on Chrome than it is on the Edge browser. I don't know why that is. I think the main point is you can upgrade this system by taking off the screws in the back. You can upgrade both the hard drive to like a, a NVMe and you can actually upgrade the RAM very quickly. So hey, you want to go to 8 gigs of RAM probably instant. Um, I think that's one of the problems with loading things and stuff like that is the RAM. Um, and uh, I mean for 4 gigs it's definitely usable um, like I had showed people before. Um, you know you can close things out but I mean basically depending on what you want to open up I mean it's obviously I don't have a ton of things on here. Um, but like you know, depending on what you want to load up, everything loads very quickly, um, depending on what you're loading. Obviously, this is Paint. It's not going to be a big program. When I start opening up multiple windows um, and multiple different systems, like a bunch of, you know, Chrome browsers and things like that, I do notice some slowdown a little bit more than it would be if I didn't do that. So just keep that in mind that, um, obviously, with a system that's 199 with 4 gigs of RAM, it's going to have some limitations there. Um, as we open up more and more browsers, we're going to see more and more issues there. But for, like, video editing and things like that with 4 gigs of RAM, I would stay away from this, even at the 199 cost, because it's not going to work that well. All right, the other thing is, is just really quickly, just using it a little bit. I mean, obviously, you can upgrade the, 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 the actual disk itself as well. So it only comes 94.3 um, gigabytes free, basically, and I barely installed anything on this. So if you want to install anything, you got to really upgrade that. And uh, so what I would recommend doing is just obviously opening up the back, upgrading the RAM to 8 gigs, and upgrading the S, you know, SSD, putting in like an NVMe. That's basically what I recommend on that part. All right, so for the Wi-Fi down here, I do get a pretty good signal, and uh, for the most part, it's, you know, obviously a strong signal, but I do notice that it's not nearly as strong as some of my more expensive laptops, so it has a limited range. So you want to be, you know, at least fairly, you know, fairly close. Um, I'm, you know, I'm in a smaller area, um, but I mean, I think, like, if you were in a massive house, you know, it might get a, a little bit harder to get a signal on your Wi-Fi. All right, so after a month of use, too, um, how is the keyboard? So the keyboard is basically, you know, what I found basically is it's, it, it, you know, two things on it. Number one, the backlighting is pretty much useless. I turned it off actually because the way you look at the keyboard, they're so flat here that um, it kind of almost makes it so you can't see the keys when the backlight's on or you can't actually read them because the lights are kind of like half on and half off and they make the keys, you know, the, the letters and things look a little unusual. So I would actually just turn it off. I mean, if you're in a really dark room, which I'm rarely in, like pitch black, you can turn it on. It's going to help you probably. But I would keep that off. So also the key travel and things like that I've noticed is, um, you know, one of those things where it depends on how you're using this, but you know, for long, long typing and things like that, it may not be the best exact unit to use. I mean, you're going to probably find that obviously, if you're if you're going to be getting this laptop because you are creating a novel or something, this keyboard, you know, it has a very short range of travel, and it's not the best for that. It's basically going to be something that you may want to consider, like getting the Lenovo. Um, you know, get they have some of the best keyboards, so that would be one one option to go after. But for this, I think it's for just basic tasks, and like I said, maybe. Um, light stuff like really light video editing in 1080p maybe but just you know writing papers and things for school and, and doing you know Google Docs and things keyboard sufficient but not for really really long stuff so just keep that in mind that the key travel gets kind of uh, tiresome and the keys are kind of plasticky they're not the best quality they're not metal Anyway, so you guys get the idea. I mean, this system is 199, at least that's what I got it for. I think it's like 260 something a lot of times. I mean, I'll have a link in my description, but I'll also link to my other video that's a lot more descriptive than this one. Um, just keep in mind that for that cost, it's definitely a, you know, a good system to buy. Um, I would say for 199, it's a steal for like a burner laptop or something you just want to take around and do some basic stuff on. So the trackpad actually is pretty responsive as well. Um, you know, I have some problems sometimes with it. Like I would say maybe 10% of the time. It's not the best. It's not anywhere to the quality of like a MacBook Air or something. But it is, you know, for the cost of it, this unit again, and what it can do, it's very, you know, I would say it's responsive enough. I mean, it's basically maybe falls out of all my laptops in the middle of the pack. 
and you're talking on a 199 machine, so it's not a bad machine. It is kind of like a feels plastic though, as far as the trackpad. I mean, I can't tell what it's made of, but it just feels that. So overall, this whole keyboard area, you know, feels a little bit cheap. But so, anyways, that's you know, I'm going to cut over to myself. But I just wanted to go over really quickly what my you know initial impressions were basically after the first month. All right, so I hope that helped a little bit. I mean, basically, it's just a really quick review after a month of use of the Motel laptop, the Ryzen 3 version of it. It's only 199 bucks, so what can you expect, right? So you got to put that into perspective. Um, anyways, like I said before, I, I make videos and all types of videos. I make, you know, technology, uh, finance, and some travel. Obviously, this is technology. I do a lot of more Apple products. This is obviously a, a Windows PC. Um, long story short, just, you know, if you guys can subscribe and help my channel out, I make, you know, maybe about two videos a week somewhere in there. Um, try to make, you know, eight to ten a month somewhere in that range. But it's hard, obviously. I want to get the support of, you know, having more subscribers and having more, you know, people look at the videos and things like that to make it worth my while. They're not the best, but I'm just trying to help people. I understand that. I'll, they'll get better over time. It's not my full-time job. Just, just really trying to help people understand the product. So, anyways, if you can subscribe, it's going to help me out. I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks.